and welcome again to this particular session. So, in the last session, when we wrapped up wrapped the proceedings, we did till up to 1.12, and now we are moving over to 1.13. And 1.13 is quite an interesting question, but not very tough one at the same time. Let me make it absolutely clear. So, here in Western Terran Enterprises is having their head office at City X. So, question states that there is a company by the name of Western Terran Enterprises and they are having their head office at, at City K and they are having their branch at City A. The head office invoices goods to the branch at cost plus 25%. Now, this is the line which should attract your what we call attention. So many times, right from the last two three sessions i have been stressing upon this particular point that whenever you are going to face the invoicing questions you need to pay uh, greater attention towards the prefacing lines actually in the opening lines you have to see very carefully whether the rate is based upon invoice price or whether the rate is based upon cost price either of the two possibilities could be there either the rate would be based upon cost or rate would be based upon invoice price so here the rate is based upon cost price however whether the rate is based upon cost or irrespective of the fact whether rate is based upon invoice price irrespective of this below whatever items would be there with respect to what we call opening stock goods sent to branch goods in transit goods return closing stock all these items will be considered at invoice price only irrespective of the fact whether the opening rate or opening line states rate based either on cost or invoice price irrespective of that below items related to goods shall be con construed as if they are at invoice price unless and until specifically stated otherwise so here in this question first of all cost plus 25 percent is the rate given to you so first thing which you should do is to actually compute the rate which you can do so very easily of your own now which i will compute of course not not worry about that now let me actually first of all begin with this particular point itself just wait just give me one minute to erase it out all right now we can begin the proceedings so first thing in this particular question is with respect to rates as i was talking about so one point one point one three is the question which we are picking up correct so first of all here i will compute let us say calculation of rates calculation of rates The first thing which you need to do is to write the equation cost price plus margin. Margin is also known as loading or profit, whatever you may like to write. Cost price plus margin is equal to invoice price. Look very carefully once again whether the rate is based upon cost or invoice price. If it is based upon invoice price, then presume invoice price to be 100. However, in this particular question, 1.13 I am talking about, rate is based upon cost, so I will presume cost to be 100. And question has stated that it is 25%. So 25% I will take off 100, it will be equal to 25. And then, cost plus margin will become invoice price. Now, in the numerator, you write margin, that is 25. In the denominator, you write invoice price, which is equal to 125. So, we will call it rate of margin on invoice price. This is exactly what we need because items below are always at invoice price. So, in order to extract the loading, I all I need to do now is to simply apply the rate 1 by 5. Now, after having computed the rates, now we can move over to the solution of this particular question. In order to solve the particular question, let me first of all write here branch account. Correct, in the books of Western Terrain Enterprises, in the books of head office, we must always mention in the books of head office, in the examination, make this habit, in the books of head office. In the books of head office, I am going to prepare 
what i am going to prepare a uh, branch office account branch account this is how i am going to write branch account now correct i am drawing the formation of the accounts i think this much is enough if i will need some extra space and then i will also prepare branch account these are the things which you need to prepare branch account correct this is branch dater's account branch dater's account So now we can proceed to solve this particular question after the preliminary things. Now opening stock is given to us. Opening stock is at invoice price twenty seven thousand five hundred. I need not require to tell you where this item I need to actually write. So first of all, I am going to write here opening balance brought down. Opening balance brought down. Then I will write here opening stock. The stock in the beginning we had twenty-seven thousand five hundred. Remember one thing: in this question, even if it would not have been written over there invoice price, still I would have had presumed this item at invoice price. This is the point I just want to stress upon you, each one of you. Now we will take the loading portion as we did in the last session. so i will write the loading portion towards the opposite side towards the opposite side i will write here loading on opening stock loading on opening stock correct in order to compute the loading on opening stock i will write 27500 into 1 by 5 i will compute the loading portion now 27500 divided by 5 that is equal to 5500 according to my calculation correct 5500 i write over there so now this item has been brought down to cost price that is exactly what our objective is correct then further the question states that daters in the beginning now opening daters are 15000 remember one thing loading is done only with respect to with respect to goods only so opening daters we will simply write over here daters opening balance of daters is equal to 15000 so i will simply write here 15000 and because we are preparing daters account also in the daters account also i will write here balance brought down opening daters is equal to 15000 correct after having written the amount of opening daters next item we have petty cash so petty cash balance under the opening balance i will write petty cash petty cash that is amount of cash which is kept with the branch manager to meet day to day expenses is known as petty cash <coughs> no question of any loading now good supply to branch account 360000 is given to you so towards the debit side of the branch account first of all i will write good sent to branch account two goods sent to branch account 360000 worth of goods at invoice price this time head of is sent to branch we will take the loading portion on the opposite side i will write on the opposite side load on goods sent to branch account now 360000 into 1 by 5 in order to extract the loading portion what i need to do is take 1/5 of 360000 divided by 1/5 so 72000 is the amount of loading correct 72000 is the amount of loading after that we have been given goods returned to head office 
goods return to head office that means head office must have sent some goods to branch and branch out of those goods have now returned the goods to head office when goods are returned by the branch to the head office we write on the credit side goods sent to branch account first of all goods sent to branch account returns returns now in this question as you can see goods returned are uh, worth rupees 25000 so i will write here 25000 first of all towards the credit side and now again i will have to do the loading and in order to do the loading i will write towards the opposite side load on goods sent to branch returns 25000 worth of goods have been returned one fifth is the loading portion, so five thousand will be your loading. Is it clear to you or not? After this, we have in this case cash sales and cash receipt from daters. Cash sales and cash receipt from daters. I need not require to tell you where these items I need to actually write. So, first of all, what I am going to do, I am going to move to the credit side of the branch account over there. First of all, I am going to write here remittances. Remittances. Under the remittances, I am going to write first of all cash sales. Amount of cash sales is given to you in this particular question. Cash sales is equal to 54,000. Besides that, we have been given cash from daters. Cash from daters or cash from customers. One and same thing. Cash from daters is equal to 2,30,000. So I will write here 2,30,000. Because we are preparing data's account also immediately towards the credit side of the data account, I will write here buy cash. So we have received 2,30,000 from data's. Then we have bad debts. Now bad debts is a transaction which, is, which has got connection only with respect to branch and what we call branch customer. So any transaction which arises and takes place between branch and branch daters finds place only in the branch daters account. So that's the reason bad debts will find place towards the credit side of daters account. So towards the credit side, I will write the bad debts 2000. Again, after that, we have been given allowances to customer. Now allowances to customer. I have already told you that branch has got this much of liberty to give some allowances to the customer. So again, it is a case of transaction taking place between branch and branch customer. And that's, that's exactly is the reason why this particular transaction will find place towards the credit side of branch data's account. So allowances I will write here. Amount of allowances to customer given to you is 1000. Allowance bad debts were worth rupees two thousand. Allowances one thousand. Now we have return inward. Whenever goods are returned to head office, that is a case of transaction taking place between branch and head office. That is why goods return will find place in the branch account. Now sales return means goods returned by credit customers to the branch. So it is a case of transaction taking place between what we call branch and branch customer. Number one. So, return inwards, I will write towards the credit side. Return inwards. Now, return inwards amount given to you in this particular question is 1000. So, I will write here 1000. Correct? I will stress this line a bit further. So, important thing is that I have already told you, loading is always done with respect to goods only opening stock, closing stock, goods sent to branch, goods return, but only on such goods which flow or commute between the head office and the what we call branch. Only such goods are considered for the purpose of loading. Now here return inwards also means sales return. It is also a case of goods, but here we are not going to take the loading. The reason being is that this is a transaction taking place between branch and branch customer. That means this time goods are flowing from customers to the branch. And both are ignorant of the real price. So that is why we cannot, what we call, uh, pull out the loading portion out of it. Then we have got, in this case, three 
items of expenses all we have to do is to put them towards the debit side of branch account i will write here to cash or bank whatever you may like to write and expenses rates and taxes given to you rates and taxes 5000 besides rates and taxes you have been given salaries so you will write here salaries amount of salary is equal to 18000 and then we have miscellaneous expenses so you will write here miscellaneous expenses miscellaneous expenses is equal to 4000 then we have got closing balance of stock account that is 31500 so towards the credit side now i will move to the credit side first of all i will write here balance carried down balance carried down now i will write here first of all closing stock amount of closing stock given to you in this particular question is 31500 so i will have to take the loading portion in order to take the loading portion i will move to the opposite side i will write here load on closing stock load on closing stock 31500 into 1 by 5 into 1 by 5 so 31500 divided by 5 will deliver you 6300 so this is the loading portion and then we have sundry daters so first of all i am going to write here sundry daters sundry daters amount of sundry daters which is given to you in this particular question is 74000 so you will write here 74000 74000 and balance carried down i will write towards the credit side of branch daters account 74000 correct then we have in this particular case petty cash closing balance so petty cash closing balance is also given to you and it is given to you as 5000 since in this particular question all the items related to daters are available opening daters closing daters and cash received from daters we can directly tally branch account because nothing is missing figure in this particular question nothing is missing in this particular question so your net profit will be equal to 55200 please check it down by yourself 55200 this will be your net profit of course this is your balancing figure however if i am going to tell you my daters account if i am going to tell you my daters account i will get a figure of credit sales if you want to know what is the amount of your credit sales, you will have to tell it this one, 2 lakh 30 plus 2000 plus 1000 plus 1000 plus 74 minus 15. So amount of your credit sales will be equal to 2 lakh 93,000. However, credit sales automatically fits into branch account. So that is the reason we never write it directly because indirectly credit sales are already written in the branch account as you know and so many times I have already explained to you. So after having done this question, now we move over to 1.14. <coughs> Even this question is self-manageable honestly speaking. Eastern Winds is having their head office at City K and branch at City M. The head office invoices goods at cost plus 25%. Similar to the last question, again the rate is based upon cost price. So your first step should be to compute the rate of profit on cost, which you can easily manage, which I have already done here. See, you presume your cost to be 100, 25 will be margin, invoice price will be this much and your rate of loading on invoice price will be equal to one fifth, similar to the last question. Opening stock at branch at invoice price is given to you. So, first of all, you will write opening stock to the debit side and then you will take the loading portion. Your loading portion will be equal to 2500, which you will write towards the credit side. Opening daters, you are going to put it towards the debit side of the branch account, isn't it or not? 
And besides that, you will prepare data's account also. In the data's account, you will write data's. Then petty cash balance is also given to you. So all these items should not pose you any problem. Good supply to branches 40,000 is given. Besides that, you will also write the loading portion. One fifth will be equal to 8,000. Goods returned to head office. Again, loading will be needed. First, you are going to put it towards the credit side of the branch account. Then loading portion, loading will be equal to 1,000. You can easily manage this question. Cash sales and, and cash receipt from data. These are very similar questions. And almost everything is same. I think only figures are halved or bit of change in figure. Then bad debts, allowances and return inward. These three items will find place only in data's account towards the credit side, as we did in the last question. Then we have rates and taxes, salary and miscellaneous expenses. You will write towards the debit side of the branch account. Then closing stock, you will write towards the credit side of the branch account. You will take the loading. Loading will be equal to one fifth three thousand. 3000 will be your loading data's account and then petty cash you can easily manage this question this question is not a problematic one <clears throat> now we move over to 1.15 1.15 is quite interesting just pay attention highland enterprise is having their head office at city x and branch at city y the head office invoices goods to the branch at cost plus 33 1 by 3 percent now in this question no doubt your rate is based upon cost so my first calculation will be the first step will be calculation or analysis of rates analysis of rates analysis of rates this is the first thing which i am supposed to do analysis of rates correct in order to do the analysis of rates as usual first of all what i am going to do here is i am going to write here cost price plus margin this much of patience I need to have if I want to really solve the question in a proper manner invoice price since rate is based upon cost price without any hitch I am going to consider cost price as 100 margin is 33 1 by 3 33 1 by 3 so your invoice price will be equal to 133 1 by 3 I have seen many students actually have a bit of problem when they actually frame the rate and rate is based this in this manner 33 1 by 3 or something like this. Anyway, first of all, I, in the numerator, I will write the margin 33 1 by 3. Then in the denominator, I will write the invoice price that is 133 divided by 1 by 3. Correct? Now the next thing is, I will have to solve this numerator figure. In order to solve this figure, how I am going to solve it? See here, I will multiply 33 with 3, 99, and I am going to add 1. So 33 into 3, 99 plus 1 is equal to 100 divided by 3. That means the figure which is written in the numerator can be written this way, 100 by 3. Similarly, the figure written in the denominator, I will multiply 133 with 3, 399. I will add 1. It will become 400 and I will divide it by 3. Now, all you need to do is just write 100 by 3 into 3 by 400. Correct? When this item will move off, it will reverse. So, 3 by 400. So, 3, 3 cancel, 0, 0 cancel. Ultimately, we are left up with 1 by 4. That means rate of loading on invoice price will be 1, 4. That means whenever I would need to extract the loading, I will apply 1, 4 rate. Further in this particular question, it is given a stock at branch as on 1, 4, 2021 is 40,000. So, opening stock, I am going to write towards the debit side and one-fourth will be loading, one-fourth will be equal to 10,000. No doubt about that, 10,000 will be loading. Goods sent to branch at invoice price, later on, I will take the loading also, one-fourth. So, one-fourth loading will be equal to 62,500. Then, we have been given goods returned to head office. I will write towards the credit side of the branch account and later on I will do the loading also. Loading will be equal to 2500. Then cash sales is given to us. Cash sales will be written under remittances. Credit sales is also given to us. So credit sales we never write in the branch account directly. We will put it towards the data's 
uh, or towards the debit side of data's account. Then discount allowances to customer, etc., will also be taken to the data account credit side. Then stock closing stock is given later on. We will need to find out the loading also. When I will find the loading, it will be equal to fifteen thousand. It is estimated that two percent of the goods received are lost through natural wastage. Remember one thing. Under this method. Uh, that is data system under data system whatever type of loss is there if it is given in the question whether it is natural loss that is normal loss because all losses which take place due to natural phenomena like seepage like leakage like evaporation like filtration all these losses are classified or categorized as what we call natural losses or normal losses fundamental rule is that normal loss have no place in accounts correct we never consider normal loss because these are natural phenomena and in spite of our best efforts we cannot actually stop them from taking place that's the reason actually that we never take them into account however i will add it, add a bit further this time it is normal loss no doubt we are not going to consider it even if this loss would have taken place due to abnormal reasons even in that particular case i would not have had considered it because the reason is that we write opening stock towards the deb debit side of the branch account and towards the credit side we write the closing stock quite obviously whatever stock is remaining that is after the loss of goods so that means when i am writing closing stock towards the deb towards the credit side of the branch account automatically what we call losses are getting fitted into it so that's the reason no separate treatment is required with respect to what we call normal losses or abnormal losses if at all they are given in the question so in this question now i will solve it although you can solve it of your own so i hope you have already noted it down so let me rub it off because i need a bit of space important point is that we have what we call in this case one fourth as the rate this is the important point which you need to understand correct and uh, so first of all let me prepare the branch account because these are initial questions i will prepare the branch account in order to prepare the branch account let me actually frame the account first i hope this is enough and similarly i need to prepare data account also so i will prepare data account so branch data account if you want to note you can otherwise you can simply look into your solution i have already computed the rate this is 1.15 correct question is 1.15 so first of all in this question we have been given opening stock as usual i am going to write opening balances brought down opening stock amount of opening stock given to you is 40000 and you will have to do the formality of taking the loading portion so loading portion we will write towards the opposite side as we normally do so towards the opposite side i write here loading on opening stock loading on opening stock now 40000 is the amount and 1/4 is the loading rate so loading amount is equal to 10000 loading amount is equal to 10000 isn't it or not then we have been given in this particular question as goods sent to branch account so i will write here goods sent to branch account 
So in this case, we have sent 250,000 worth of goods. So I will write here 250,000. Again, I will have to pluck out the loading. So I will move to the opposite side. I will write here load on goods sent to branch account. Load on goods sent to branch account. Amount is 2,50,000, so I will write here 2,50 into 1 by 4. So my loading portion will be equal to 62,500. Correct? 62,500. Then we have goods returned to head office. Goods returned to head office are 10,000. So goods returned to head office, first of all, I will write towards the Credit side, goods sent to branch. These goods have been returned by branch to head office. So goods returned to head office means goods returned by branch to head office. 10,000. It is a transaction taking place between branch and head office. So we will take the loading also. We will write towards the opposite side load on goods sent to branch. So such goods which have been returned Loading on it is equal to 10,000 into 1 by 4. That is equal to 2,500. 2,500. Correct? Then we have in this case cash sales. Cash sales as, you, as each one of you are very well aware that written towards the credit side under remittances. So I will write here remittances. Amount of cash sales is equal to 1 lakh. So I will write here 1 lakh. Cash sales 1 lakh. Right now we do not have cash receipt from debtors. After that we have been given credit sales. Credit sales as each one of you know actually we write only towards the debit side of branch debtors account. Amount of credit sales in this question is 3 lakhs. Three lakhs. Further, it is given discount allowances to customer. So, discount and allowances to customer is equal to ten thousand. Discount allowances ten thousand. We will simply write it towards the credit side of the branch debtors account. Is it clear to you or not? Then we have in this case a stock at a stock at branch as a 31st of 3, 2022 that is equal to 60,000. So we will write here balance carried down. In the balance carried down, I will write closing stock. Amount of closing stock given to us is 60,000. We will take the loading portion. And we will write it towards the opposite side. Load on. Closing stock. That is 60,000. Into 1 by 4. That will be equal to 15,000. So you will write here 15,000. What else is given in the question? No treatment of normal loss as I have already told you. No treatment of normal loss or even abnormal loss. No treatment. This is normal loss. So I am writing normal loss. Even if there would have been abnormal loss, I would not have had done any special treat. So now the first step is that we do not have cash receipt from daters. So we now tally daters account. Only this much of information in the daters account is available with us this time. So when I am going to tally it, this time we sold 3 lakh worth of goods on credit. And we gave a discount or allowance of 10,000 and there is no closing balance. It means we must have received this much of amount. Cash from daters. So cash from daters must be equal to 2,90,000. This is your balancing figure. Correct? This is your balancing figure. 2,90,000. Now 2,90,000 you will write over here. Cash receipt from daters, this is your balancing figure.
And now you can tally this one to arrive over your profit. Your net profit must be equal to 2,25,000 if I am not wrong. Net profit is equal to 2,25,000. Not a very tough question. And slowly and steadily now you are getting into the groove. And invoicing I think is coming up to your expectations now. 1.16 is another question now. 1.16. 1.16 states that Spectrum Limited has a branch at City K and you are required to calculate the invoice price of the goods sent to branch and profit included thereon from the following details. Actually, in this particular question, question is simply asking us 1.16. Actually, question is not asking us to prepare branch account. Question is not asking this. It is hardly two mark question. Just to make you understand in a better manner, question, see here, question is telling that goods received from head office is equal to 1 lakh. Goods in transit is equal to 50,000 and goods invoice to branch at cost plus 25%. Try to understand this particular point. Suppose this is our accounting year. In this accounting year, question is stating that head office must have sent some goods, goods sent to branch, which is not given to you. You have to find this only. This is the only requirement of the question in this particular case. Goods are invoiced to the branch at cost plus 25%. Goods received from head office 1 lakh. Whatever goods head office have sent to branch out of those goods received, goods received, it is given in the question that 1 lakh worth of goods have been received by branch. Branch has received rupees 1 lakh worth of goods. Whatever goods you sent this year, out of those 1 lakh worth of goods have been received by the branch. Sometime it happens that head office might have sent some goods. And out of those goods, by the end of the accounting year, some of the goods are still or maybe in the journey. Such goods are known as goods in transit. This is exactly what is given to us that goods in transit are 50,000. That means head office has sent some amount of goods which is still unknown to us. However, what we know is that branch has received 1 lakh worth of goods and some of the goods are still in transit. Some of the goods are still in transit. Goods in transit. Goods in transit means goods is still in the journey. And question is stated that 50,000 worth of goods are in transit. Now if I am going to ask you what amount of goods head office must have sent to branch in the beginning. No doubt about that head office must have sent 1,50,000 worth, 1,50,000 worth of goods. Correct? Out of those 50,000 are still in the journey. That is why it is given in the question that branch has received actually 1 lakh worth of goods. Further in this particular question, it is given that rate of profit is 25% on cost. Rate of profit is 25% on cost. Cost plus margin is equal to invoice price. Your cost price 100, margin is equal to 25. So invoice price will be equal to 125. And your rate of loading will be equal to 1 by 5. That is 25 by 125. Your rate of loading is this much. Question is simply asking, what is the amount of goods sent? That is 1,50,000. And question is also asking, what is the margin of, this, of these goods? So you can simply take one fifth of 1,50,000 and you can deliver the answer in just two sentences. Just to make you understand a way bit better, in this question, if, if I would have had presented the information in the branch account, how I, how, how I would have had, 
I would have written goods sent to branch. Goods sent to branch means goods received by head by branch one lakh plus goods in transit. This is how we found out amount of goods sent to branch. That means towards the debit side of the branch account. <coughs> sorry, we always write goods sent to branch account. So whenever in the question it is given to you that so much of goods have been received by the branch and goods in transit are also there. So you have to exercise caution in such question that while preparing the branch account, you need to reflect first of all total amount of goods sent to branch account and you will reflect this in this manner. Of course, now you know the worth of goods which have been sent by head office to branch is 1,50,000 and of course we will take the loading portion of these goods and loading portion of these goods will write towards the opposite side, load on goods sent to branch account 1,50,000 into 1 by 5 that is equal to 30,000. This is my loading. Number one. Second thing is that ultimate target is or ultimate target or objective of preparing the branch account is we want to know what amount of <coughs> goods <coughs> sorry I'm not feeling good today anyway what amount of goods have been received by the branch because we have written 150 towards the debit side and our ultimate objective is to present that right? what amount of worth of goods have been received by the branch so I will have to write goods in transit towards the credit side also Goods in transit will always be written towards the credit side, no doubt about that. Because we have sent 1,50,000 worth of goods. Out of those 50,000 worth of goods are still in transit. So now we can say that goods received by branch is equal to 1 lakh. But we cannot directly write here goods received by branch. Remember one thing. And because goods in transit is related to goods and it is a transaction between head office and what we call branch. So you will have to take the loading also. Then you will take the loading, you will write it towards the debit side, load on goods in transit. That is 50,000 into 1 by 5. That is equal to 10,000. However, in this question, this much of solution is not needed. All you have to show is invoice value of the goods received 1 lakh it is given goods in transit is 50 so invoice value of goods sent is equal to 150 and profit margin included in it is 30,000 only this much of answer you need to actually reflect in this particular question besides that we have in this case 1.17 and logically you should be in a position to do this particular question honestly speaking you should be in a position to do this particular question very easy first of all rate is given at cost plus 25 percent your rate of loading will be equal to 1 by 5 and now you can easily find it by yourself opening stock 12,500 is written you know the treatment daters is also given goods receipt from Delhi is given remittances to Delhi cash sales gas receipt from daters is given goods returned is given don't forget to take the loading and then expenses are given, closing stock and all, everything is given, 1.17 can be easily, very easily managed, correct? So in this particular session, I think this is more than enough and we will continue with that in the upcoming session. So till then, it's goodbye.